here's my Astromaster 130 EQ telescope. And I'm going to show you this small motor here that I've fitted to it. Now this motor fits onto the mount and the slow motion cable and it allows you to track stars without having to constantly adjust the telescope because the motor will follow the rotation of the Earth. Now it seems quite a daunting thing to fit a motor onto your telescope but I was surprised how easy it is. So I'll show you in this video just how easy it is to get this in, set up and running on your telescope. So here's the motor drive for the Celestron telescope. This is the 93514 logic drive and it's for various telescopes from the Celestron range. We're going to have a look what's inside here. So obviously some instructions and there is a battery and a bracket for a different type of mount. We have a screwdriver in here as well and here is the machine. It's the Logic Drive Precision DC motor drive and you've got north and south there depending on where you are, whether you're on the north or south hemisphere. So if you're in Australia you set it that way and if you're in England for example you set it that way. There's your on off switch and we have two kind of screws here. This is the variable speed control and this is the power light. It has the variable speed control because you might find you want to speed up or slow down the tracking for the object depending on how far it is that you're viewing at the time. So how do we get the battery inside the motor? Now, there's an Allen key in here as well. So you've got a screwdriver and an Allen key. You've got all the tools you could need. So we need to get this battery into this machine. So we're going to first of all start by taking these small screws out of the front here. These are just two small screws. And that just pulls out now. And then you can see all the gubbins. Now here's the battery connector. It uses a nine volt battery. I would call it a PP3, or you may call it a 1604. And this is for the, this bracket is for the CG3 mount. And the other bracket is for the CG2 mount, depending on which mount you have on your telescope. I'm going to go with the CG3 mount, and that's why you have the screwdriver, because you may need to swap the bracket around. You'll notice in here, this is what connects it to the slow motion controller, and it's a pinch screw that goes in to the flat part of the slow motion controller to secure it in position. So the battery needs to be installed first, and you can see the battery slots in there. Now this comes like this from the factory, um, I'm going to put that underneath there instead because even though that is part of the motor it's not going to get very hot and that will just give me a little bit more cable length. So that's going to go through there and then I'm going to go through here and now I'm going to connect my battery. And then that slots in there. So that's the battery installed. Now I can test it now. Make sure something happens when I turn it on. Uh, which is the power switch? There we go. It's making a noise. So I guess we have power. So now we've got the battery and we can use these screws and put the case back on. There we go. Again, we'll have to quickly test the power. You can hear it slowing down, can't you? the fastest speed and even on the fastest speed you're getting very little movement on that motor there it's very well geared to give power and good battery life you get around about 40 hours battery life with one of these little batteries so you can rest assured you can use it for a long time before before you need to undo these screws and change the battery again 
So let's fit it to the telescope. Looking at the equatorial mount, this is the part we're going to connect it to on the telescope. This is the right ascension slow motion controller. As you can see, it turns there and there is a small lug on the other side of it. Now the lug is only on this particular slow motion controller, it's not on the other one. So you can see, you can't really go wrong with which one to fit it to. And you must remember there is a small flat part there on the controller and that's the part you need to get the screw into on the motor. If you get it onto the round part, it's not gonna grip and it's not gonna make any difference. So you need it on this flat part here. So you need to remember there's an adjustable screw inside here and obviously that would connect it onto the shaft. So I'm gonna look at where I think the screw thread is. I'm gonna make sure that my flat part is in line with that. So I need to just move it this way a little bit so that when I put this screw on here, I know it's locking on that part of the slow motion controller. Just move that out of the way. And you can tell if you've got it right, if when you turn the slow motion controller, it turns the motor. That's because we haven't fitted the bracket yet. Now when I secure the bracket onto here, then the motor will hold in place and it will turn the slow motion controller for me. So the next job is to replace this screw in the side here with the bracket. So now we're gonna look at this screw on the side of the mount here. This screw is gonna connect the motor to the telescope. If you turn the slow motion controller now, you'll see the motor moves with it. So obviously we need to undo this screw with the supplied Allen key, which you can mostly do by hand once you've loosened it. And we're gonna simply secure the motor bracket to that mount and put the screw back in. We'll use the supplied Allen key to do the final nip. And now we have everything set up, we should be able to turn on and enjoy the motion control. <laughs> 